Yes. Welcome back. What's up, everybody? Yes, we are back. Yes. Okay. Feels good to be back. It does. In the it feels office, good to be. In the South. In the, everybody, in the South. <laughs> uh, there, in the South. there are benefits to being Southern, I'm here to tell you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good trip out of town. We're going to tell you guys all about it. But I'm just going to... folks to get in here. We're waiting and we're having our beginning little taster going on here. Tequila. Oh, for the beginning. Oh, sorry, Jules. It's hump day. We're going to make it through the rest of this week. Cheers. We're going to encourage you to grab a drink or something. Yeah, it's 4 o'clock. It's 4 o'clock. Even if you're just drinking some juice, mm -hmm. some tea. Some sparkling anything. That's right. I love sparkles. Just grab you a bev ridge. Hey, everybody. Come on in here. We're ready to talk about our experiences, talk about what we have coming up, because we have, we're so blessed, we're so busy coming up, but good busy. Mm -hmm. not, not crazy busy. Just, you know, getting to the bag busy. <laughs> <laughs> For you guys who don't know who we are, I'm Johnny Caldwell. And I'm Tanika Reeves. And, and we, we are the Cocktail, cocktail Bandits. Bandits. Your curly ladies who talk cocktails a daily. That's right. And today we're going to give you guys a recap of Bar Convent Brooklyn and our overall Brooklyn experience, which was great. It was. It was good. It was awesome. We stayed in a beautiful Airbnb in Williamsburg. Yeah, in Williamsburg. So I guess that's the, like, a little area of Brooklyn, a little I guess affluent. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. You know, in Charleston, we have our little areas. West Ashley, you know, all of this is Charleston, but they just call it different things. So I would, we kind of think that that's what Williamsburg was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really nice food everywhere. It We're was. not used to that in the country. Now. I st that's one thing I'm not used to, being able to walk outside and just grab food two steps down, ten steps down. And all the food was great. It was delicious. It really was. I'm talking about literally options a stone's throw away <laughs> 24 hour options where you can get snacks beers beverages whatever you need mm -hmm. it was great it's different from southern and we live downtown charleston and it still isn't this accessible as it was in brooklyn yeah a lot of places close a lot later i guess for the lifestyle mm -hmm. and in charleston things close at like 11. yeah that's that's good for food like 11 is super late in charleston so we had options and we ate our bellies. <laughs> we, we ate did. a lot. I think I, I think I had Jamaican, Thai. We had some Southern chicken mm -hmm. and waffles. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, all kind of stuff. We we ate all kind of stuff. Thai a couple times. I we love did. Thai food. We had a little Thai restaurant right around the corner. I'm talking about like 500 feet. <sighs> Norris. Shout out to mm -hmm. Norris Thai. It was good. Thank you. She treated us very well. Mm -hmm. But we were there for Bar Convent Brooklyn. It was our first time being there in person. Last year, we in, we joined the conference virtually where we did our own seminar. But this year, we wanted the education committee. Absolutely. And um, with the education committee, we were involved in curating the classes and just you know, just the ideas of what classes we should have at Bar Convent, what should we be talking about, you know, during this pandemic, just different topics like that. And um, we are pleased with how diverse the uh, board was and how much they wanted to hear our concerns. And then they actually tried to implement those things in our, um, you know, afterwards and, you know, and the actual conference. And, um, you know, it just was an interesting, good experience. It was. We were interesting. interesting for sure because, you know, there's beverages involved, so there's always mishaps. And people are trying to work, so they're not going to get it right the first time out the gate. So we're definitely going to give everybody involved some grace. And also they were dealing with the new changes with the COVID restrictions inside New York, too. So shout out to Bar Convent Brooklyn's team for being flexible, for being adaptable, and just dealing with things that are beyond their control. Absolutely. And that happened literally like the week of mm -hmm. where they changed the CDC guidelines. So it was crazy to say the least, especially when they're not changing in the airports. But that's <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Well, but yeah, um, the first day, super cool. Well, we got there a day early, so yeah. we were able to really just enjoy the city and walk around and like just see what Brooklyn is. And the weather was wonderful the first day. So thankfully we got there a day early just to enjoy New York. 
There's there were parties, we just didn't go. <laughs> and so glad we did. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like as you get older and you do these conferences more and more, you like save that for the people who this is their first time experiencing it. Like we didn't, we didn't really want to party like that, especially with the COVID out here. <laughs> So we just took our time and like stayed in the house where we're at what we were supposed to be at and then we just came home. I see white plates, black faces. What's up, boo? How you doing? Good to see you in Brooklyn. It was good. Shout out to AJ. That is one of the big perks about going to conferences like this. You get to see your industry friends who live all over the world. Yes. So we got to see people like AJ, who's down there, Serenata in D.C. If you're in D.C. area, go check that bar out. Go check her out. And hopefully see. they have the DMV Black Restaurant Week coming this year, 2022. Wink, wink. Let us know something. For real Z, That's a great uh, event, too. So check that out if you're in DMV area. Yeah. Um, that's a great way to support local businesses. But we got to see Alicia in Brooklyn. We got to see our friends from Barbados, uh, Denise with Wissette. This was great to see our people together in one space safely. Yeah, and speaking of D.C., we got to see Capri and Holiday. Um, they are all with Chocolate City's Best, mm -hmm. who are also doing a cocktail competition in D.C. So you guys check that out. I think they had some submissions come in mm -hmm. over the weekend. So go check out their stories and just look at all the wonderful cocktails that the Black and brown folks are making in dc mm -hmm. support them and also capri led a panel discussion on yeah. equity in the black community it was great it was also um input from clyde davis who was amazing he is a forefather forefather <laughs> in this beverage thing especially <laughs> when it comes to people of color getting into beverages so look into clyde davis and it's Jr. Equano, econo mm -hmm. equano rum right now i don't want to mess the name up but it's really really delicious rum it is. Check him out. He was on that panel as well as Tiffany, Tiffany Berry, mm -hmm. who is actually in Charleston right now doing something with Garden and Gun. Shout out to her. Yes, the drinking coach. Yes. Check her out. She is always talking about history and just different things with um, the beverage community on her page. She's really coaching us in this beverage thing. So check her out. And then last but not least, um, Mike Holiday. Yep. Um, Holiday the Thankful on, on Instagram. And he is also a co- a managing owner um, at a bar in D.C. So they were talking about equity and ownership. Yeah. And um, it's really good to be at those type of events and hear people of color talking about equity and ownership because the conversation is different. Mm -hmm. It's different um, than people than, you know, people that have these opportunities abundantly offered to them. Right. And sometimes when you are new to this game, you don't really know what to ask for when you're partnering with brands, with corporations. And it was great to hear that their insight on how they partner with people mm -hmm. and how they get more equity out of these partnerships as opposed to, you know, a quick dollar. So I learned a lot. It was a very diverse audience, too. Yeah. And people were asking really, really good questions. So shout out to all of the panelists for being so open and vulnerable about their experiences. And shout out to Bar Convent again for providing a platform to have that conversation. Absolutely. And in that same room, just on the other side, they had like a full tasting room that was, I think, sponsored by ITA. Shout out to the ITA, which is the Italian Trade uh, agency. Comm agency Commission. They um, treat you well. They do. They made sure they got us in Italy and we had a great time mm -hmm. with them. But at every conference, they have their own like room pretty much and they are representing their country and their spirit. So shout out to Italy for really trying to get awareness out with their Amaros and their bitters and their digestifs and their grappas, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. They had a whole room, so they really um, held it down. They killed it. So let's get into some of the samples that we have because mm -hmm. one of the great things about these conferences is they give you so many different little products and swags and samples of things. So it kind of like keeps the memory going. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to highlight some of our favorite little swaggy knickknacky things that we got so you may have seen us do a cocktail with starlino back in shades of pink was march march so, or april yeah around that time springtime yeah and they make a delicious uh rose liqueur and they had these little samples of this jelly that they use making the same ingredients that they put inside the other core. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so cute to be able to have that same unctuous flavor, put it on a biscuit or put yeah. it on a waffle. And it's just a way that you can have that beverage experience, but not in a glass, but you still get that punch. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's with the cocktail kit craze and all yeah. the little individual stuff from, you know, COVID. I love this little 
just packaging mm -hmm. is super cute. It is a good size. That's a carry-on size. Mm -hmm. You don't gotta check that. Another great um, thing about the conferences is there's always like little photo areas. And one of the most unique ones that we saw this year was Hoteling & Co. They had it look like you were in the air in, on a plane. Yeah, that picture that you guys see um, <laughs> on our Instagram, we were literally in the conference. They just had a whole little area that was set up like an airplane. Mm -hmm. Because if you know on a plane, you can't take a picture that far away no. from people sitting down and just <laughs> relaxing. Like, you, you don't even have that much space. And we had big, you know, fake glass. It was fake <laughs> cups. And the cocktail was fake, too. Yes. It was all just props. But we asked them, we're like, where did you guys find, like, this plane stuff? They're like, oh. Google, <laughs> yeah. just Googled and found some, you know, plain, you know, materials for us to make up this wonderful thing. But it was a great, it was a great um, exhibit. It was, because, you know, we all get the, you think about first class and they serve you the fancy cocktail. So it was kind of like that type of vibe. And they also had these to-go kits where you need all the ingredients minus the tequila to make this margarita. So if you're going on a plane and you want to make you a little flight, you know, in-flight beverage, this is all you need. And you can buy the mini from your airline. Yes, that's a great idea. But it would be so cute to have some small minis in here. <laughs> that would be so cute. That would be so cute. So Just love like a that. Small one. It serves three. Oh, that's a good. That's that's good for a nice little coast to coast mm -hmm. flight. And it says to be enjoyed with like minded spirits. Like it. So they had a great display. Like they were giving out um, cocktails too at that that station. Another great display um, that we saw was Montenegro, and I'm actually wearing their shirt. This is the shape of the bottle of Montenegro. Mm -hmm. But they had a big um, trailer outside, too, mm -hmm. where they were serving Montenegro cocktails, which were delicious. But this little swag is a little yo-yo. I haven't seen yo-yos in years, mm -hmm. but I thought it was so cute and classic, and it's like a little thing you can do by yourself. So, you know, it's a way to engage with the spirit without actually having to drink. Yes. And Montenegro is an Italian Amaro, which is also, you know, a part of their, like, aperitif, digestif family. This is actually a little mini of Montenegro right here. Mm -hmm. They also gave us a deck of cards, and these are very classy cards. I will say that a Mont Montenegro's brand is very, like, sophisticated it Italian, is. you know, chic vibe. Yeah, chic is the word I was looking for. Elegant. Love can't wait. I've actually, I took several deck of cards because I play cards and I've already busted into them. They're good. They are good. What else do we have? Oh, this was super cute. This Casa cute. Dragones. Go ahead through that. Yeah, Casa Dragones had these little cups, these little plastic cups because everything was plastic. But this cup is so convenient because you can take it apart and then you just flip this part and this and you can carry it with you which we so did. it's covered <laughs> and you just take it along with you and nobody's questioning you about your margarita that's in your cup so love that turn it back around and then you can have it it's called like a riedel which mm -hmm. is usually a tasting glass that you use in to taste mexican spirits mm -hmm. but they've made it you know what is the word mobile that's right, portable. And, mold, portable and then you portable. can also have it stemless where you just use yeah, the one piece mindless. like that. Mm -hmm. How cute. So that's what we love about the conferences. They're so innovative. They're bringing out all these new products, new ways for you to enjoy the, prod the, the products. And it gets your yeah. creative juices flowing because we can definitely use something like this for our events. Or any festival mm -hmm. for that matter. How convenient is that? You can throw this in your bag and not have to worry about your content spilling. It's just really convenient. We did. Or breaking, like wine glasses at wine and food festivals. We most certainly filled up our glass and took it to go. Mm -hmm. And it arrived to our Airbnb with no leakage, ready to be dumped Consumed. over some ice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, what else did we get? Tons of hats, tons of clothes. We actually have to like leave some of the stuff because it's so much things you can't really even pack it all in other montenegro socks yes gotta love the sock swag hat these are like kind of dad hats like golf hats I would they had say. tequila ones too it just was a lot of this type of stuff um t-shirt from luxardo and i've been there and they make good stuff it's another italian tomorrow humble brag on that mm. and also the Peru tent was huge, too. Um, ITA had a tent in Peru. So all these different Piscos and 
spirits from Peru were on display and they also were giving away these little bags of like corn chip snacks things <laughs> which are so good like it's a little earthy and salty but it's like a little taste of Peru that you can enjoy and eat mm -hmm. along with the delicious amounts of uh, Peruvian inspired cocktails that were on display. So shout out to Peru. They always do a good showing at different conferences too. Yeah. The last time I think we were at Tales of the Cocktail in, um, in New Orleans and there was a whole Peru like a Peruvian like dinner day. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. it was like right. hours where we were there and just trying ceviches, different um, things that they were having as Peruvian cuisine and just from different brands and then trying all these different Piscos as well. It was good. Another um, group had food. All the ones that had food, little snacks, those are the best because they're thinking about you. <laughs> they're thinking that, you know, you're going to have to have something to eat. Because I will say there wasn't a lot of food options available at Bar Convent. Yeah, and the pairings with the food are so important, too, because it changes the flavor profile from when you're tasting it neat versus when you're tasting it biting with on some salted caramel popcorn or on some salted roasted Peruvian corn. I mean, just... It gives you a different uh, mouthfeel and a different vibe palette for it. A lot of them were doing um, little satchels of their scents too, which I thought was cute. So a lot of the gins were giving you an idea of what the aromatics would be like with these little satchels of herbs. And for its gin, give you a little, um, this is actually a garnish pack. So you can actually use this to garnish your cocktail. How cute is that? It's a little garnish pack. So smart. You don't have to think about it. You don't. And if you want to go ahead and make your cocktail, you have all the things to go ahead and do that. And Ford's Gin also had a oyster shucking display that I was so impressed by. The real mother shuckers, find them on Instagram. <laughs> he was shucking oysters and pairing them with the gins on site. It was good. So good. He has like different toppings that he puts on the, on the oyster. So as opposed to just doing like a vinaigrette, he had um, sauteed mushrooms on top of the oysters. And when I tell you that my life has been changed, <laughs> my whole life has changed. <laughs> it was so good. Like okay. Culinary said Ben is the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, girl. <laughs> and he was so informative. He knew about the bivalve so much and about the flavor combination. So those are the little activations that stick with you past just having that sip of the spirit. And making you want to go back and visit Ben. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Black Culinary? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it Ben? Um, Johnny was talking about the lack of food. My critique for the conference is the lack of music. Yeah. Um, you know, being spoiled, going to conferences like Radical Exchange that had music tied into every component, and even just our own events that we have where we tie music in no matter what the culture is. We try to find music to bring that vibe. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that going on at Bar Convent, which I thought was a big miss yeah. because it just brings into the experience. Like you, the music brings the experience together. You want to dance a little bit. You want to shake a little bit when you're eating your food. And it just wasn't giving sounds. Wasn't giving the sounds. It wasn't. It was left up to certain like booths to play music so like there was the tequila area and they had like a little bit of like salsa music playing but that was it and <laughs> it was dry I will say that because you want to feel like the movie music is moving you throughout the space yeah. and that wasn't happening so Jackie said I promise you music for 22 all right Jackie <laughs> I like the immediate response we're not coming for y'all now Jackie yeah we're not coming for our comment <laughs> at all but that just brings more energy. And with everything that we had going on this year, I'm sure music was probably one of the last things that you think about, especially with everything that was going on in New York. Mm -hmm. But yes, that would just elevate. It would make it even better. It would create more of a vibe for mm -hmm. sure. We got to see some of our industry friends. So we ran into the people from Liquor 43, just pass passing them by and they're like, oh, we love you. The Showing us love on social media, that's so great. And we were like hanging out outside about to leave the conference. And he's like, I got something for you. And just hands us a bottle, leaves and comes back, I got something else for you. So it was great to leave with full size bottles of this product. And we're gonna do a little sampling of this today. Very small sampling. We're gonna try with the start with the original. And um, these are I would call these cordials, these are liqueurs. Yeah, this is a liqueur. This is thirty one percent, they're usually thirty percent or less. And um, 
that Very that's the connection that you get that at conferences that you can't get any other place like seeing people being like oh you know here you go try this you'll love this and people just want you to experience their product try something different if you like it great if you don't that's cool too but they just mm -hmm. want you to really experience it and when you have the product in your office or at home you can play with it in True. ways that you weren't going to be able to play with it by just taking a little sample at a conference or thinking about it because we have so many other spirits that we're tasting at the same time so what's some more description on this guy? Okay. It says a secret Spanish family recipe of Mediterranean citrus fruits infused with selected botanicals. Okay. Welcome to Liquor 43, the world's most versatile liqueur. Explore the miraculous golden sensation in its wonderful array of drinks at www.liqueur43.com. Okay. Very light on the nose. Cuarenta y tres. Like maybe I'm getting uh, vanilla. It is a little vanilla. It's very herbaceous. Take a sip. Cheers. Oh, it's sweet. It's like butterscotch. It's definitely like butterscotch. It's like liquid butterscotch. butterscotch. <laughs> it is like a Werther's little uh, candy, hard candy, liquefied. And it can also be kind of related to a cap, uh, candy corn. I was about to say Capricorn. A candy corn, if you have that, that it's that buttery. Salty, a little yeah. salinity on there. This does not smell anything like it's going to, like a taste. It doesn't give you any sweet on the nose. It reminds me of caramel, too. Like, just a little rice cream could be. Ooh. Caramel. Definitely a syrup can be made out of this. Yeah, it's super topped. thick. It's very viscous. If you look at the legs on it, I mean, they are thick. The, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it is on your tongue too. Viscous. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks for the likes, you guys. Drop the hearts, please. Keep it coming. <laughs> yes, um, this is good. It is good. I didn't doubt it. But you know, sometimes the looks can be deceiving. Like you look at it, it looks like it would be taste like caramel, and it actually does. <laughs> it does. And this I try to think about what could go well with a spirit like this, and I'm thinking whiskeys thinking bourbon I wouldn't do cognac just because the cognac has the fruit I don't know if I would would pair the fruit with the butter I don't know and it already has the sweetness too in the cognac as well I would definitely go whiskeys even rye yeah like, very yeah very uh peppery something that's more on the drier side because it's going to give you all the sweetness you need you don't even need to add any sweeteners mm -mm, this, uh, no syrups no this will work I like that very different Liquor 43. Check them out. Add them to your bar. It'll be something unique, something different to try. Mm -hmm. They also gave us a bottle of their horchata. Horchata. Which is vegan. Wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. And if you guys don't know, horchata is a traditional drink mm -hmm. that they make in Mexico. And this one, I guess, is RTD because it's only 16%, oh. which is ready to drink. And it's a creamy fusion of liquor 43 and traditional horchata from Valencia. Very good. This is a dairy-free, light, and creamy Spanish liqueur that brings delicate, sweet Mediterranean flavors of tiger nut, spice, and citrus. What the hell is a tiger nut? We're about to find out today. <laughs> <laughs> I've only had horchata uh, non-alcoholic before. And we've had it from like a Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. where they made it, they made it homemade. So this is something different. I love dairy-free, creamy stuff. I just bought some um, coconut cream ice cream sandwiches, and nice. boy, dairy-free ice cream sandwich, it changed my life. That's what's good. I ate two of them, and my stomach did not hurt. It was like... That makes all the difference. It does. So yes, creamy, um, dairy-free things. So it is white, even though this bottle is painted white. So this is not the actual color of the liquid. This is just a white vessel. This is the color of the liquid. Like brownish white, if that makes any sense. Like, like creamer. Yeah. Color half and half. And it gives you a cinnamon. Like bone. Like bone color. There we go. Smell on it is um, dairy-like. <laughs> it smells creamy, but you also get like the, the after notes of... Um, Spice. The spices, yeah. A little bit of cinnamon. 
Hey everybody, I see Top Shelf Peacock. Hey girl, hey BT Wise guy. Hey. What's up y'all? Cheers, we're just trying this horchata. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's creamy. Ooh, this is a great little fall drink. This is definitely giving me Christmas vibes. I don't know why I thought immediately like Halloween for some reason. Like it's giving me like fall, Halloween, going out, having a drink before you go out on Halloween. Sweetness is kind of like, it is sweet, but it's not as sweet as this. No, it's not. And it's also lighter, 16%. Mm-hmm. It's also not as thick as this either. So it's a little more loose on the palate, mm -hmm. which I enjoy. It's giving you the texture of milk, like thin. It's super creamy. I wonder how a white Russian would taste with this. I'm sure it'd be really good. I have to ask my white Russian friend. She likes white Russians. Like she's, that's her jam. That's good stuff. Like I think our assistant Jeannie loves this other like cream mm -hmm. liqueur that we always have called Bushwhacker. It's a coconut cream, but I think, I think she's gonna love this. Mm -hmm. Right up her alley. Very good. Just I over didn't some see ice. I with coconut, so. Mm -mm. I'm gonna have to get Jules to try it out too. And she grabs a little sample. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna give us a, a second opinion over here mm -hmm. to the side but no shout out to Vicker 42 for supplying us with 43 these 43 excuse me mm -hmm. 43 I wonder what the 43 means no yeah, yeah I'm done with that what if there's like 43 spices or 43 years of doing this oh you yeah, already did it in 1943 you just maybe never know. found it out there we have to do some more research before we come back to y'all with these spirits <laughs> shout out because they've already reached out to us from meeting us at the conference, which is again, I love that when people do the follow up emails and like, we love y'all, let's do something. Mm -hmm. So, you will be seeing more collaborations with us at Liquor 43. Oh, <laughs> yes, our assistant approves. <laughs> she loves it. So, you know what's what's up. It's good. She said yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, again, we definitely will see us do a collaboration with Liquor 43. What's up, Holiday? We were just talking about you and your class. Yes. Shout out. Hopefully, somebody recorded that class. We got a couple minutes of it on our phone that we are going to share. Yeah, and I some do highlights. have some video. Yeah, I have some videos of everybody speaking from the class. So, got to drop those gems throughout the week and maybe a little bit next week as well. Yes, definitely proud of you guys and the information that you were sharing. It was much, much needed. Mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us today. All right. Hey, D. White. Hey. I see ya. One more thing. So, again, more things. Bushwhacker made... Probably the best cocktail that I had at the conference. It was an Irish coffee. Is it Bush Mills? Bush Mills. <laughs> I said Bushwhacker. Bush That's the other product. Bush Mills, the guys who made this, it's a whiskey. They had a beautiful activation, like a beautiful booth, and they were serving these Irish coffees like this big. I got some pictures and video I'm going to drop for y'all. But when I tell you it was warm, it was balanced, it was creamy, it was delicious. It was probably the best cocktail that I had at Bar Convent, Brooklyn. I'm gonna go ahead and say that it was. It was good, and they rushed. Like, they were doing that fast. So they had that recipe on smash mm -hmm. because they were not taking their time to throw it in there, even the garnishes, all that. And I'm like, oh, let me just take this for the picture. I thought it was just for the gram, y'all. And I tasted it, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is good. Very good stuff. And this vessel can be used to, like, blend something in it because it has one of those little balls. So if you want to emulsify something and kind of like blend it up, they have a recipe for their famed Irish coffee inside the vessel. So shout out to Bushmill for having a great activation. So and is that Nana Bachi? I think it's Nana Bachi. Hmm? I love our, our followers. Nana Bachi said, I just Googled it. Wikipedia says it got its name because there are 43 different ingredients, which is what she said in it. Cool. Nice. Thank you for the fact check, girl. Yes. I need to hire you for that. Thank that was you, because that was on point. That was on time. They talk about those mods on YouTube live. <laughs> we might have to make you a little moderator. <laughs> Thank you, sis. And tons of pins, um, you know, all the usual stuff, um, mm -hmm. matches. So all in all, great experience at Bar Convent. I want to say, too, like, these pins are for our bartender people. You know we can put these in our hats and stuff, too, right? I'm going to start, like, decking out my hats with these pins and, like, making it fashion. Make it fashion. Make it fashion. People put them on their handkerchiefs, on their bar aprons, just to display. You know, we tried all these things, so it's kind of like a marker of an experience. Yeah. That's why I love the pins, and I keep most of all that I get. <sighs> 
super cute too. Well, this is the last thing I'm gonna show. <laughs> <laughs> they were giving out these little small. This is the size of my nail. Okay, mm -hmm. it's full of spice, and it's the botanical ingredients for the. Uh, I think it was a gin we were tasting. But just we, so cute. It was so many samples that we sampled, y'all. We didn't overdo it. We were sampling and researching. You we were. say that many times. <laughs> sampling and researching and not driving. We all. were not. We were Ubering everywhere, baby. It was great. <laughs> and the Ubers were coming up in minutes, okay? It was yes. awesome. That's the perks of being in the city. Also, it was very COVID safe at Bar Convent, Brooklyn. They were hand sanitizers everywhere. People were wearing their masks. Um, water was everywhere too. Good job. That was great. The water service was, it was abundant. There was no mm -hmm. problem finding water. Um, a mass and other non-alcoholic companies were there too. So it was great to have the non-alcoholic products be yeah. a part of it. And a mass had a great, um, setup too. They had candles, hand soaps, just things that you don't even think about, but they had all these aromas from their, um, non-alcoholic spirits. That was just a great combination. Yeah, we had a, an amazing Paloma that was non-alcoholic mm -hmm. that just knocked my socks off. I mean, I've, I had some tequila to mine as well, but it was good non-alcoholic and it was good with the tequila added. So shout out to just all the creativity that was going on at Bar Convent. We definitely um, had a great time there. For sure. We'll be back next year mm -hmm. and we'll be adding our two cents and our commentary on how the event can improve moving forward. And, and hopefully um, Bar Convent Brooklyn asks us to be back on the team again next year. So going back to the last time we were on live, remember when we did this, you guys? We talked about camp craft cocktails and those lovely ladies down in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. They sent us these kits. And one has vodka in it. We use Van Gogh premium vodka in this one. And the other one we use alkaline water. Mm -hmm. They've been steeping for the exact same amount of time. And we're going to bust them open and see what they taste like. See if we notice the difference. See if we love the combination. It looks great. You can see the color. It's really taken on the color of all of the berry and jasmine and orange peels that came in the kit. And we're gonna do a before and after too. So mm -hmm. what hitting for. One thing I do notice is that this one is a lot more looser. The alcohol one is a lot more looser. This one is seem more like a syrup at this point. I see that. This is very thick. I think it's just absorbed into the stuff versus this one just like, I don't know, eating away steep at it. Steep it, yeah, kind of more. <laughs> this more was the steep because also in with the water one, you have to use hot water. So we use like boiling water when we added it to this mixture. Somebody contributed to the texture that came because this was just room temperature vodka. Okay. Yeah, this is super. It's been boiling then. So it boiled in here. It really yeah. extracted. Get a little cookie. Anna. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with the one that does not have alcohol in it to see if we can really taste the difference. Again, we got these kits from Camp Craft Cocktails. Located in Florida. They're right. They're based in Jacksonville. It's a woman-owned, woman-run business. Mm. Got to support that. You guys got to do a mold wine. I mean, this reminds me of a mold wine, honestly. It looks like it. All right. You guys, the color is awesome. Love it. And this is the berry blend, and it's definitely giving you berry vibes with the color. It's giving berry aromas as well. It is, but more like um, like jam, not fresh fruit but like a fruit that's been caramelized. Mm. Delicious. Jesus. That's good. I thought that was a cocktail. Seriously, and that jalapeno spice. That's so good. That's in there. It really gives you that alcoholic feeling that like I'm drinking something. Type 10 of out feel. of 10. That's good. Seriously, you would drink this and not know that it's not boozy. It's delicious. Goodness. We have the baby 68. Who is the baby 68? Tell me, hey y'all, hey Johnny. Hey. <laughs> Give me some of them hearts, boo. Drop the hearts, please. We love to see it. This is good stuff. It mix cocktail hour. It says, what are we drinking? We are drinking um, Camp Craft Cocktails. It was a um, jar that only had like the fruits and the spices and everything in it. And we put in hot water two weeks ago mm -hmm. and let it steep. So now we're tasting how it tastes. And we also have one that is mixed with vodka. And we're going to just, you know, compare them with one another. 
This was easy to do. So yummy. You did nothing. All you did was receive your package and put hot water in it. <laughs> yes. And just let it sit in the refrigerator. Let it and do then its thing. you have and it's kind of a thick um liquid. Thick liquid. So you can mix this with soda water and have you a little um non alcoholic spritz that you really feel like is a cocktail. That's Even a, great a sangria. Idea. That's this could great. be a sangria as well because you could add wine and make this uh, a sangria. Uh, the Baby 68, it's not moonshine. It is water mm -hmm. that came with uh, fruits and cinnamon herbs. sticks and herbs and some sugar, some peppers. Mm -hmm. And then we got we added one with water and then one with vodka. So we're going to try the vodka one now. This is so good, y'all. Seriously, like Tanika said, you could add some soda water to it to give it some bubbles. And then you could you still there you could also use non alcoholic wine to give it that body too. So yeah. You could keep this all in a if you like to. Or hop water. I love hop water so much. Hey Daniel, how are you? So this one had been steeped in the Van Gogh vodka, and. You can see it's looser when even when I'm pouring it into yeah, the glass. Super, and it's um not as rich of a color. Right. The vodka, I think it's the alcohol in the product too. Mm -hmm. You don't smell any vodka. No, <clears throat> it smells identical to this one. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, you can taste it though. <clears throat> <clears throat> Non-alcoholic. What's the point? <laughs> The point is, like, people like me, like, right now I'm tasting because, you know, it's a part of my job. But I like to take time off sometimes of drinking alcohol. So you want to have something that's kind of like an alcohol feel but not really alcohol. You know what I'm saying? I do a lot of, like, non-alcoholic beer. And I like the flavors. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I, also, I like the inebriation all the time. So True. that's why it's not alcoholic. There are pregnant women out here. There are people who are recovering from um, alcoholism. They're just people who don't like the taste of alcohol, so. The way it makes them feel. They deserve options, too. And that's right. They should have something that's delicious. But I feel you, girl. And looks good in the glass. I feel you mix cocktail hour. <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> we're here for the booze. But anything, you know, we like to tell you how you can enjoy it. We say anything from a barbecue to a baby shower, there is a cocktail or beverage for that occasion. And sometimes. Yeah. Mix cocktail hour said I do scrubs. Do you mean shrubs? Shrubs, yeah, because shrubs we, are good. We love shrubs too. Vinegary, they're more um, pronounced in flavor. They definitely will change up a cocktail and give it some real bitter, vinegary, spicy notes. And with this, it can be a cocktail and you just, this is just a spirit part. So you can be adding, like I said, a little soda water, and you can add you some tonic. You ginger can even ale. add like ginger ale or some juice. You might even want to add some sparkling water. It, you can add any of these things. It's delicious. It really is. Shout out to Camp Craft Cocktails. Again, we're going to drop the link to their social media in the description box, um, in the in the caption once we um, finish up this recording. So follow them. They're great. This is a great gift option for it somebody. It is. And it's something to do but not really do. Yeah. Like you're doing it, but you're not like overdoing it. And it can inspire you to do your own thing. You might want to get your own fruits, spices, and things together and then use, reuse the jar when you're done with this to do something on your own. What she said. Makes cocktail out of strawberry and rosemary. Oh yeah, I love strawberry shrubs. Like they I love the sweet and the and the vinegar. This is definitely all you need and you just want to lengthen it out. Cause it has it's full of flavor. It's definitely boozy. All of this was filled up with vodka, so this is strong. Yeah. Um so if you don't want to keep cocktail making simple, do this in advance for friends coming over. When they come over, you mix this in tonic water. And you if go. you even want it even more nuance, I would do a gin with this too. Like gin would be really delicious. Uh, a juniper forward gin would taste really good in this blend. I agree. And it says you can enjoy eight to 16 cocktails depending on your serving sample, whether you use an ounce or two ounces versus in a cocktail. So this can stretch. It may not look like much, but when you're talking about cocktail serving, this is plenty. This is an afternoon worth of drinking for friends. And just think about if you have five friends at your house and then you want to serve them all the same drink, you can literally serve the same cocktail, awesome. alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and no one feels left out. That's such a great part no one is feeling excluded no one has to yeah. say oh i'm drinking something different because i'm not drinking alcohol right now it's no. the same thing the same thing that's such a good point i yeah. love that mm -hmm. don't make anyone feel like they're left out you know what i'm saying 
for choices. <sighs> so that, <laughs> okay. A couple more things, you guys. We, um, Negroni Week is coming up. Mark your calendars. It's a great day for service to get back to the community. Also a great day to enjoy an iconic cocktail. And what's the dates? Oh gosh. Let's see. Negroni Day of Service is September 14th. Mm -hmm. So look out for your local area USBG here in Charleston. We have a chapter and most large cities do and most of them are doing an initiative for Negroni Week. Some sort of like beach sweep or community cleanup or something where you can serve your community and then also have a delicious cocktail afterwards for your efforts. Negroni um, and Capari donate so much money to different campaigns and nonprofits throughout the year as a result of Negroni Week. So support it however you can because it supports a larger, bigger picture. And they're about that life. They supported us, you know, throughout this pandemic um, and still are. So shout out to Campari, shout out to their initiative for actually bringing bartenders in and supporting them. And um, we're part of the community as well. Mm -hmm. And we push the products. So we like to be able to push their products because they are looking out for us too. They are, and they always send little gifts. So this one is a bunch of magnets with different words on them. So you can make, you can use the magnets to create different cocktail recipes. And also if you wanna leave like your lover or friend or sibling a note on their refrigerator, and you could just mix and match and rearrange the magnets. And you could say, I love you, or I am so little. They're so small, but you can make like a little sentence saying like tonight I'm looking, cook, dinner's on me, or you know, something really cute that you can do and create your own like language and message with these little magnets. I thought this was so cute. They are cute. Just something to do without really doing anything. Mm -hmm. But um, Negroni is always thinking beyond the bottle. Kapari is always thinking about how you can actually experience their product, not just consume it. And that's what it's about. I think that's what we try to do um, with our brand when we're talking about new products is showing you guys an experience with it versus just telling you to drink it. Mm -hmm. Because who wants to, I mean, as professional drinkers, we want to do more than just drink. Right. So we want to bring that to you guys as well. Speaking of things to do, mm -hmm. I took a class last week. Our good friend Paige, who runs a and Workshop, if you guys know back pre-COVID, we did a couple of collaborations with a and Workshop. It is a women-owned business in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, where they do little small craft projects for females. Mm -hmm. So you can get your hands dirty, you can get some power drills going on and paint and really mm -hmm. figure out, you know, how you can be crafty. Um, so they had a class last night on making your own charcuterie type of boards and as well as painting your own display. I chose to do this one where you can use charcuterie cones because they're very COVID safe. So instead of having a board of charcuterie, you could put little individual charcuteries in these cones. Blanket crafts. You can also make like little uh, plant displays. Which one do you have? You have like a tray that you made at mm -hmm. AR? I have a tray that holds like just drinks and it's just like a full tray. With handles on it. Mm -hmm. Really cute. So you can really get um, very creative in AR &R shop. And she's open to different ideas. So if you have an idea for a craft, she is down to collaborate and bring it to life. So check them out. Something fun to do with your friends, girlfriends, kids, your mom what have you, and it was very moderately priced. It was like 65 bucks for the charcuterie, two glasses of wine, and the craft, which I think is a steal of a deal. Mm -hmm. Check those guys out and get active. Nice. Last but not least, you guys know that we have been doing our Facebook Live audio rooms on Facebook. You guys, we had our first one with Jackie Summers, Jack from Brooklyn with Sorrel, which went really well. Hope you tuned in. Yeah, we actually saw Jackie in um, Brooklyn for Bar Conference Brooklyn and just did not get a bottle. We were we did. moving back and forth and did not get one. So Jack from Brooklyn, we got to get that case, honey. It's not a bottle anymore. We need to get it. We need to get a case from you. We need to get that. But we did um, try it and it was great. Delicious. Kind of reminds me of this color wise. Mm -hmm. And with the spices as well. Mm -hmm. It has a cinnamon spice and a little bit of nutmeg and all that other good stuff going on with the Sorrel. Mm -hmm. But our next show, we are talking about black people don't drink beer, mm -hmm. but we do. So we are going to be talking with um, Jamal Lemon, 
and just talking he's a, a beer journalist and we're just going to be talking about all things beer mm-hmm. culture the trends where do we see beer going and just the myths around black folk and beer consuming that's right so make sure that you have the most updated version of the facebook app you can only log into the rooms on your mobile device So 7 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern time that is, we will be joined by Jamal in our Facebook audio room talking about all that stuff. If you have any questions that you want us to address during the call, Mm -hmm. send us a DM, go to Facebook. We already have the event set up so you can drop questions in the actual discussion box on the Facebook event. Um, Mark your calendars. It's going to be a great discussion, and we're looking forward to having that conversation with Jamal. Yes, and support, support, support. Just come in, even if it's for five minutes. We want you guys to come and just check us out on this platform. We're super excited to be working with Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're super excited to be presenting, you know, these people that we know and love online and showing them and talking about the conversations we already have behind closed doors. So share with us. Yeah, it's going to be a good one tomorrow with Jamal. He is very um, knowledgeable when it comes to beers and looking at it from a journalistic perspective. So he homebrews. He's just out here doing the thing. He's been in, he was just in Charleston. We missed him because we were going to Brooklyn. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. it all works out the way that it's supposed to. And we have a lot to talk about tomorrow. We are excited. So you guys tune in tomorrow, 7 p.m. on Facebook, Eastern Standard Time. So y'all know if y'all in L.A. and all those places, four. <laughs> you're in Chicago, you know, what is it? Six. Right. We want to see you guys. And we have more coming up. We're going to be talking to Sean McCoy about wine. Who else do we have on the list? We have Chef Howard Conyers. We also have Ashton Berry. Whoop, whoop. And then our girl Alexis Brown. So we have a star studded lineup mm-hmm. for our live rooms, and we don't want you guys to miss out. All right. So we will see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. On Facebook Live Audio Rooms, you guys. Bye. Have a great afternoon. Much love.